Welcome back, friends. Oh, my God. So as you can hear from my voice that I've had a week. So that's why I haven't posted lately, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, I lost my voice completely, so I'm going to try to get some of this video out. Some of it, my voice will sound fine because I actually recorded it while I was creating the video. And some of it I had planned to talk over in voiceover later, but then I lost my voice. So <clears throat> I will try to talk. Anyway, let's, let's get started. Okay, so I have selected a bunch of papers. Um, I also created my fabric mosaic. Um, the, the phrase here is, this is all about stopping. Um, it's for the stop. So another, I don't know why I put play up here, but it's going to say stop. And it's going to be a stop button. I didn't want it to sound negative, so I was really struggling with finding the perfect words for this. So I came up with, don't hurry, don't worry. The beauty of life is in the precious moments, in each precious moment. Stop and smell the roses. So I think that that is positive enough <laughs> that it's going to be fine for this. Because stop is a very, pos a very negative word. And I was concerned about that, but I wanted to have stop, play, pause. And um, so... Here's the last one that I did, and the one previous had a little bit more like reds in it and stuff. So I'm trying to figure out, I'm thinking maybe I don't want to have too much red, even though stop is red, but I did pull out some reds that might be fun. They're bright red, so maybe it's not, you know, even, even this in combination with that might be fun. Even this that has a little bit of yellow in here. So I have a lot of different reds that I can use. And then mix it with some other some other colors, some blues. You know, I love this this paper. And and introduce maybe just a tiny little bit of this bright green since I had it in here. And I think it's in the other one as well. Just so that there's something that, here we go. These are some nice papers that I, neutral. These are more neutral. That would go nicely with the reds. And maybe just a little pop of this for some texture, small, tiny um, texture. This is maybe a little too bold, but I'll, I'll leave it in the pile because it, and, and I also like the simplicity of this. This is, um, you know, it has two different patterns going on, but all of the colors are kind of blending together. So I think this is a perfect paper for this. You'll notice on this one, a lot of the papers were either very grungy or ha had a very little like um, stencil texture. There's a little bit, but more subtle. This was uh, from a leaf. Um, I do have one of the, I have some leaf stuff. I don't know. We'll see. I like this grunge here. So I'm not really sure yet. I'm, I'm still, I love the simplicity of this. So probably this, this maybe is a little too strong, too busy. I'm loving just this little bit of grunge. This is in the same keeping as all of this pr pretty blue color. Now that I look at this, too busy. Mm, maybe. Love this. Too busy. Too busy. Maybe a little piece of this subtle color here. And I'm loving these neutrals. Too busy. Okay, so we narrowed it down a little bit. We got rid of some papers. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating my circle and getting it in the right position. 
and then uh, also marking where my well about where my uh, word is going to be just so I can plan my papers make sure that it is a very neutral paper so that we can actually read the word you know and then maybe also think in terms of what my stop button is going to be uh, but uh, then I have to start cutting some arcs to, so that I can get my papers down. All right, so we're going to start with creating the circle. Okay, so when I'm creating my circle, I'm going to use a compass. Um, I want to mark my, my little layout sheet with my center. And I'm going to use my compass to get the right measurement here. I want a nice sharp point here so I'm switching pencils and I'm and I'm using a light color so that I'm going to see it on the against the black really well. So I'm putting the center point of the right smack in the center and I'm just using this as a test to make sure that my compass is exactly the right size. And then I'm going to mark on my board you know exactly where that needs to be. So the center point from you know top to bottom and then side to side. And then when I draw with my compass, so I made that little dot in the middle. That's where my compass is going to be anchored. And I'm just going to lightly draw my circle. Okay, I found a perfect paper. This, I think, is a great paper. It's in this family. It even has a little bit of, you know, these other colors. And it's on rice paper. So, yeah, we're going to get rid of anything that's not rice paper. I also found this while I was looking for it. This has some nice, subtle, subtle stuff. Same with this. This. This I actually used in this previous one, so I think I'm going to use a piece of this. I also found this, but this is copy paper, so we're not going to use it. Unfortunately, all these blues were also copy paper. Ugh. I have to be more careful, but this one we're definitely using. This is copy paper. And I might have some of this on rice paper, so I'm going to go look for that. Okay, so I found this piece, which is also that same texture of on rice paper. goes really well with this paper. So we are definitely probably going to use that. I might use a piece of this. All right, so I think we have enough that we can start. I am going to probably put this up here. Yeah, we're going to use this up here. So I'm going to cut an arc somewhere around here. And we're just going to cut a bunch of arcs and see. And then we'll tear. And then we'll see where things go. I've got my gel medium and my brushes. Okay, so these are the papers we think we're going to use. Now we have to cut our arcs. So I use my Cricut mat because it's slightly sticky, just a little bit sticky. And I, I burnish my um, papers down onto the paper to avoid cutting like that so it's still it cuts really weird it, it like tears the paper because the rice paper is so thin but I'm still able to get a big enough arc for what I need so as you can see so I have my uh, my circle cutter set to six and a half inches which is what the size of my circle is and so whatever arcs that I make are going to fit 
you know, all the way around. And I can just make small arcs on some paper and bigger. And if I burnish the paper really well, like I, like I have been doing now, um, it doesn't tear so much. As you can see, I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job. My first one, I must not have like burnished it enough. I just use a clean brayer. And I'm just cutting a bunch because I'm, I'm not sure yet what I'm actually going to use. But I don't want to have to clean off my desk and do this part again later. So I'm getting some bubbles, so I'm cleaning those bubbles out. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this paper. I'm loving the way this paper looks. So I'm going to cut two pieces of this. And I know I'm only going to use a little piece of that, so I'm not going to cut a big piece. And that one tore. Okay, so now we're just going to start tearing and planning. love this paper it's beautiful and it's just a brayer off sheet you know it's just you got to save everything these beautiful happy accidents that happen when you're when you're making your gel prints if you see something happening quickly save it before you brayer over it and ruin it again I apologize for my voice I know it sounds worse than than I thought it was going to sound I definitely wanted to use a piece of that orange paper because I used it in one of the other collages. And since the three of them are going to hang together, I thought it might be nice to have a piece of it. I'm still not sure. But it's coming together. So you could see by cutting these arcs with the, with the uh, circle cutter, how much easier this is than me trying to cut this by hand. It's good to have these, these extra tools just to make your life easier. It's coming together. So it was around this point that my camera died. And so um, I don't have actually the part where I'm gluing all these papers down, but you, you got to see my planning process. So that's the most important part. The actual gluing is kind of boring anyway. Okay, I'm very, very upset. But the camera stopped recording while I do the entire process of me gluing this down. Uh, that is the problem when you are the only person who's doing this with no assistance. Anyway, I, am, I was waiting for this to dry to see if I dislike this, and I do, I dislike this. Um, this piece here, I am going to, I'm going to add another piece of this over here. And 
I'm still not sure what I'm going to do down here. I'm, wa I'm waiting for it to dry just a little bit more, but I can pretty much tell it's going to look like that. And I'm not happy. So I, I don't mind this part, but this part here, I'm not happy. So I might just layer some more of this paper on top. I'm going to cut a little piece of this so it goes kind of that way. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. That's not what I wanted. I wanted it to go off the side a little bit like that. There we go. I'm still not. Okay, I think that's good. All right, now we have to find a piece, some piece of something that can go over here. And I think just more of that paper I'm going to leave this part here because you see the blue under it and that is nice. Yeah, that part's nice. All right. Um, I'm, I'm not liking this hard line right here. So thinking maybe another piece, a, a redder piece of this. Okay, so we're going to wait for this to dry. We're going to cut off all the edges, and then we're going to start this mosaic. Okay, so I'm starting with a sharp blade, the bl sharpest blade possible, brand new blade. This is very important because um, even though I'm cutting very thin papers, you'd be surprised, especially with the glue and everything, sometimes it just doesn't go through. And, and at this point, we have papers overlapping as well so we're going through sometimes in some places you know two or three papers but also be very careful you have to I'm I'm have years of experience with an exacto knife so if you are using a blade like this be very careful anyway my my word stop is going to be at the top but we're going to first work with the circle so here is my fabric mosaic. I'm going to pull the paper off the back. So if you're not familiar with this product, it's called, uh, it's a printable, with your inkjet, um, a printable fabric that has a piece of paper stuck on the back to get it through the printer. And it's made by Jacquard. 
and I love this stuff, especially when you're just doing black and white. I find it a little difficult with some colors, but unless you really understand Photoshop and, uh, you know, color, um, what do they call them, profiles in Photoshop, you might have a difficulty. And it also depends on your printer. So I'm using a professional Canon printer, the Pixma, Pixma Pro, I think it's called. It's a, a 13 by 19 printer. And it has like, I don't know, eight tanks of ink. So um, even the black is using, you know, more than just the black. Uh, one of my patrons recently asked me, how do you get that really, really dark black? Because when she tried this, uh, she got, you know, kind of a brownish color. So you have to play with the profiles in Photoshop. And also your original document, you have to make sure that you're not just using grayscale black. Um, you really want to use a, um, either a CMYK or an RBG to make all those colors into black. So your black has to have a little bit of cyan, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of everything to get that true black. Anyway, so I have already started cutting my little triangles and applying them uh, to my circle. I, I squared out where my little um, stop button's gonna be. And I'm just making sure that I'm not going in the same direction with the type. I just want it to sort of be, uh, you know, if, if the type is going in one direction, I want it to go, uh, the piece next to it is going to go in another direction. Um, it just gives it a better look. Um, and obviously, you cannot read the entire phrase, but you can read some of it. And that is like a more subliminal thing that helps you you know, fill in the blanks, come up with your own, what you think it says. Um, and that was like something I came up with many, many years ago. And I've been probably for 10 years now creating different kinds of fabric mosaics. Some of them in, in grayscale that actually have like six different shades of gray. But on these simple, smaller ones, I'm just using black and white. And, and this is something that anybody can do. The, the bigger work that I do with the grayscale, uh, it's very tedious and it takes really long time to do. And I don't think anybody would really want to try it, to be perfectly honest with you. A lot of people say, why do you share your process? People might copy you. And uh, it's like, yeah, they might do it once, but I don't think they'll do it again <laughs> because it is very tedious. So even in this black and white, you might find this a bit tedious. Um, I don't. I think it's very, um, a little bit meditative, I think. Um, and it's super easy to do, so um, you might want to give it a try. Anyway, so I'm just going to keep going until all of the black area is filled. And it kind of gives a visual texture, but that isn't a little bit on, on the minimalist side because it's an overall texture and I think it pairs well with the torn papers. Okay, I skipped ahead a little bit because this could even get a little boring. <laughs> uh, at some point, and I'm, I'm about to get to that point now, it becomes more like a puzzle where I really have to try to cut pieces into the shape where I need it to fit. And this is the part that where it's, it starts to get a little bit difficult, but it's not too terribly difficult. And also, if it doesn't fit exactly, because it's black on black, like nobody's even gonna notice. And because I've been doing this for so long, I've, I've gotten good at like just visually looking at the shape that I need and figuring out how to cut it. Um, and this circle cutter thing that I have that's for fabric uh, really makes this process easy. If I had to do this with scissors, it would be a lot slower. So I've skipped ahead again. Um, 
I, as you can see, I still have a couple of pieces that need to be applied, but I thought, let me get this little centerpiece in. And I found this paper that has a little bit of all of those colors. It has a little bit of that green, a little bit of the reds, you know, those, those, um, I think the quinacridone magentas and the, uh, mixed with the Hansa yellow. So there's a little bit of everything there and it's a great, simpler centerpiece. And now I have to attempt to fill in those little tiny spaces just to give this, get this finished. Really tiny pieces at this point. And I use like my brush to pick up the pieces when they're that tiny, like you can't even pick them up with your fingers. So my brush has a little, you know, the gel medium on it and I can use the edge of my brush to pick it up. Okay, so now it's time for the word stop. So I use a Cricut for this. I know it's a, it's a cheat. Um, do I know how to hand letter? Yes. Do I want to spend two hours hand lettering this? No. <laughs> I, this is a small piece. I'm not going to get a lot of money for it. So I'm going to do this the smart way, which is using my Cricut. So I have a Cricut Joy and I'm using the smart uh, material, which I'm not a big fan of. I'll tell you, um, you'll, it, it's just a little harder to work with. I think, I think the other, um, removable vinyl, that you put on a mat is, is just works better. But when I went to the store, this was the only thing I could get. Um, and, and I also don't love that it's white on white. So you can't even see where my word is. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to, I have my uh, transfer tape down and this is the part that is much more difficult. Like that would have not even been, I have to kind of coax it. Um, with the regular removable vinyl, I don't have to do that. Oh, it seems like the smart vinyl, it wants to stick to the backing paper a little bit more and I have to coax it a little bit. So if you do have a Cricut and you try this, keep that in mind. So once I get to this point, I can now, I'm just like burnishing slightly just to make sure that it's not going to come up. Um, I have to mark my center point on the board. And I already have my center point of the word stop marked off. So I'm lining them up. And I'm just going all the way to the top. So if you're familiar with my work, you see that my words always go off the top. And this is a really common question. Like, why do you do that? <laughs> and my answer is always because it looks better. Um, in my opinion, if I dropped it down, let's say a quarter of an inch, half an inch, the whole thing falls apart. It just doesn't look as good. So um, anyway, I use some black paint and I do two coats of this because the first coat, you know, I'm painting on top of, you know, paint and uh, that has also a lot of gel medium on it. So it's not really sticking because of the gel medium. So that's why I have to do two coats. So I let that first coat dry and then I add a second coat and I do not wait for the second coat to dry. As soon as I finish the second coat, I start to lift my um, Cricut material. And that is because if I let it dry, it'll be plastic on plastic and it might lift the paint like right off and just destroy it. So got to do it right away. So as you can see, the removable vinyl comes off without destroying the, the painted paper underneath. And the reason for that is because when I applied the paper, you didn't get to see that, but I always not only apply gel medium to the board and then place the paper down, but then I always put some more gel medium over the paper and that seals it really good. So the gel medium is kind of protecting it. That looks like a two. Mm, not good. 
I need to put something else here. But other than that, it looks nice. <laughs> I'm pulling out my papers again. So they were on kind of on the top. Maybe we could put... Maybe I could find something in this shade. If I have any of that left. So this is the box that I, I just dump everything in just to get it off my desk before I have a chance to, you know, file them by color. And if they're like pieces like this, then I, I just kind of leave them in this box because sometimes if I just need a piece, um, this will where we all go to find it. Okay, here's that paper. Okay, so that's one one possible piece. Here's a couple of possible pieces. And even, even this is a possibility. All right, so let's put this away. And let's just see. So this actually might, let me see, this or this? That was really bothering me. It doesn't bother me anymore. And this color is also reflected in here. So is that very vibrant green. So I think we've got a really nice cohesive piece now. And it goes with my other pieces. Oh, hopefully I got the spacing correct up here. Okay. I have to clean up the sides, varnish the whole thing. I'm going to put a gloss varnish like the other two. And that is going to be with the pouring medium. That's my, my favorite uh, high gloss finish. So this looks much better down here too. And uh, yeah, looks pretty good. I just got to, I'm going to sand the side a little bit fix it with the um, black gesso. So I take the edge of my brush and I go over the side sideways. That way I knock off any white that might have been on the paper. That might have been showing from the paper. Don't think I showed that before. You 
have to do that very carefully. Okay, I'm going to let that dry completely, and then I will do the varnishing. So thanks for watching. Sorry again for my voice. <laughs> Hopefully I will be on the mend soon, and I will be back with more videos. So in the meantime, here's a video that you might enjoy. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Don't forget, create, inspire, and share. Bye-bye.